Hello awesome people, what is going on? It is Brad Fusion here and welcome back to more Elite Dangerous where in today's video I will be talking about rare trades, what they are, how to do them and how much potential profit you can actually have in this and the kind of downsides that they also have as well. So what are rare trades? Rare trades are items that appear on the marketplace from the commodities market in low numbers but have high rewards. So right now if I go to the starport services of Asban City and if I go down to the commodities market you will actually see it has a different colored name so you kind of know what the rare items are. As you guys can see here it's Erin and Pearl Whiskey. Now note that not every station has these rare items hence why the name is rare you have to find certain stations that have these. Now, obviously, this information is available publicly on the internet for those people who have found them, who have updated these websites. Uh, you can go find them from quite a few different places. Just simply searching uh, Elite Dangerous or Rare Items, you can actually find a whole list of them. I've been using a few sites, but mostly, once I've found these places, I've been, at least me and my friend, have been kind of working on a spreadsheet of where to buy items, where to sell items, and the profit would make from them, and the best profit you can make for a certain item. Now, admittedly, this is just personal information, and it might be completely wrong, or maybe people found better places to sell things, but I like the way that we're going right now, and the amount of money we've been making from doing these. Now, the downside to rare items, or rare trades, is they are in most cases in low supply. I have not seen any more than eight of one certain item or eight of a rare item. Uh, right now I just managed to pick up five of them from here. Even though it says high supply, they only really come in, I, I think every 15 minutes they come in uh, as anywhere between one to five. I think if you give it about half an hour there might be a little bit more than that, maybe it's a maximum of eight. I haven't seen any more than that, but you can simply just stock up uh, maybe wait a little bit longer. So that is the downside, the kind of balancing aspect of these rare items is the fact that, I mean, if you want to make a massive trade with these rare items, yes, you can probably sit around and wait for two hours, or, you know, you can go out and do something else. But I think the way I would see them, uh, see people doing these is more of a secondary objective. So say, you know, you collect a whole bunch of whiskey, you go off, you do a few missions, you travel the galaxy, and then you maybe find a station that has another rare item, uh, or even just an, another station in general, you figure out, you know, I'm, I'm a fair distance away and this station is offering me a decent profit, so you'll sell them here. Uh, it doesn't really matter where you sell them, it's just the distance away from their point of origin uh, it kind of increases the price. So on the right side of my screen there, you'll see that rare goods increase in value the further you travel from the point of purchase, which is basically what I was just explaining. So the best distance I've found is around about 160 light years to... 220. Now that doesn't mean that I've been doing trades inside that margin. I've actually been doing a trade that's a little bit less than that and I've actually been getting a decent amount of money for doing so. Now that doesn't mean it's the best trade I've found. There's potentially so many other trades out there that I could be doing that could be yielding me so much more money but I found a trade today that I've actually really liked. So I'm going to be showing you guys a trip to a certain station, grabbing that resource and then taking that back to Erinin making a trade and that way you guys can see the amount of profit I've made. Now, I also should point out the fact that I have overhauled my vessel and I've actually just hit a million credits for the first time in this game. Such a victory for me and it's taken me so long to get here oh, because only just recently have I focused on doing rare trades. So I think the past three or four days I've decided, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to travel around, I'm going to find these rare items, and I'm going to find the best places to sell them, and to kind of jump back and forth between different places, just to see whether, whether it sells more at a certain station that we've been traveling to, or whether it sells more at another station. Anyway, let me look at the outfitting here, so I can show you guys the changes I have made to my vessel. So right now, I've basically kind of stripped down all the weapons. I do have a pulse laser and a multi cannon just for if I need to go into combat. Uh, the pulse laser for the shields and the multi cannon for the hull. Uh, they're very, they're really cheap weaponry, but they're just there just in case I need to actually use them. The most of my changes is actually done to the internals. Now I've increased my frame shift drive to a B class, which increases my jump distance way more considerably than you would expect. Right now, I have a jump distance of 16 light years, as opposed to, I guess, the initial one would be maybe 10 or something. Uh, so I can jump very, very far. Even when I am full on, on items, I can jump still around about 15 or so light years, which is great when I'm focusing on trading. It means I can go... I can go very quickly between two different locations without really worrying about too much there. So the frame shift drive has been increased, which is lovely. 
I have also increased my power distributor, but that's not really something I'm really willing to talk about, as it's nothing great or anything. The cargo rack is something I've changed as well, so now I think by default you have a cargo rack of maybe 8 or 10, but uh, now I have a cargo rack of 15, is it, no sorry not 15, it is a cargo rack of 14. My mistake for saying that, it says 14 over here, I should have read that before. But I do have a cargo of 14 now, which means that if I do find a place that has rare items in high supply, I can take a whole bunch of them and then sell it in on the market for a decent amount of profit. And that is basically where I've been getting a lot of my a lot of my money from. And also another thing is I've increased my fuel scoop to a B class item. And I have to say, having a high class fuel scoop, even though this one cost me, I don't even want to say how much this one cost me. I'm pretty sure it cost me anywhere between uh, 150,000 to 200,000 credits. But I have to say, it's been worth it, honestly, because I fly around the sun now, and I'm basically refueled. But enough of talking, let me actually go out and show you guys uh, some of the trading. So I will most likely fast forward a lot of these, however, I will show you guys my first stop off by a sun, so it's just so I can show you guys how fast I can actually refuel on um, on this uh, on, on a sun. So, let me uh, leave now, I don't think they've refreshed their market, because they do do it every 15 minutes or so, and I do already have 5 of them, and I haven't really been here for too long. So let me uh, let me leave. So let me go back to my thing here. Let me jump out to the top. So I am still using my Adder, which is a ship I haven't actually done a video on yet. It's kind of like a hauler. Maybe it's a little bit better than a hauler, I think. I personally have liked it. The only thing I don't like is how my seat is slightly offset because it is a two-seater, even though the game doesn't really support uh, two-seaters just yet. At least not in terms of having another player in your other seat. Anyway. Let's launch out of here. So the ship isn't exactly the greatest in terms of maneuverability either. It's, I, I don't know, it, it's it's alright. I've been enjoying my time with it because I've maxed out a few aspects of it and made it just a, a massively great trader, at least for a low level anyway, like like myself here. Uh, so right in front of me, I think that's a python, uh, an anaconda, sorry. Very nice looking ships. I really want to get one of them at some point, but uh, it will take me a very, very long time to get the money to get to where that ship's currently at right now. So let me fly out of here, and then I'm going to mark out our locations on the map, and we should be good to uh, jump all the way there. So today I'm going to be going to a place called Leasty, which has a station called George Lucas. Now at this station it actually sells two rare items, which is a great thing. Now most stations don't usually sell rare items, and you might come across one that sells one rare item, but it's not too often you come across one that sells two rare items. So let me look at the map here, and I'm going to mark out where exactly we're going to be going. So right now we're at Aridin, of course, and what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to be marking out the fastest route. So this will kind of generate the map a little bit faster as well, uh, but it'll give us more of a direct path to where we want to go. So I'm going all the way up here to where I know we'll be going off to. Pan is usually a midway point that I will mark off to, and I'll be using Pan as a, yeah, like I said, as a midway point. So I'll mark off Pan, and then once we get to Pan, I'll then mark off Leasty, which I can search for you guys, just so you guys can see where it is and how far away it is. If I go for Leasty like that, without the O, obviously. Leasty is all the way over here. Now, obviously, you might think that's a very, very far away away, and of course, it actually is a very, very far away way. I mean... Let me actually, hang on, let me go over here, let me actually mark it out as a location to so you guys can actually see. So let me just tick that like that. You guys can see from where we are to where it is, yeah, it's a fair distance away. But if I actually look at it again, just to point it out where it is, it's really only 118 light years away. That is on the borderline of making a decent sale. It's not going to be the best profit you're going to make, but it's, it's going to be an alright profit. The reason why I use Lisi is because it has another rare item there, but anyway... Let us now jump away, and we should be great to go there. So, obviously we can't jump straight to Leasty, that would be a little bit insane. Though it would be lovely, I admit. I'm going to have to mark out back to our original uh, location of Pan, which I can just search for again. P-A-N, and that should give us all the way back over here, and we can mark it out like so. There we go, so I'm going to jump to the next sun, and I will show you guys how the fuel scooping actually works. And we are still mass locked. So, again, I will see you guys uh, once we get over there. Okay, welcome to Rockapilla. Now, I will say that I haven't really used up too much fuel via my initial jump, but uh, you guys will still be able to see just how much fuel I'm actually gaining per second here by going around this sun. So I'm getting 65 fuel a second, which is just absolutely amazing for a B-class fuel scoop. This is a, like, you don't even need to stop for fuel anymore. There, it's done. I've, I've completely... So basically, every jump I do, I can refuel... Uh, 
refill on fuel in a matter of 10 to 20 seconds, depending on how far away the jump is, obviously. But uh, that's just an example, just so you guys can see how much better uh, a high quality fuel scoop would be. Because I didn't really expect the number to really increase that much. Because uh, I was initially using one that was only giving me 15 fuel a second, which was okay. But it just took so damn long. And now that I have one that has 65, it's amazing. So anyway, I will see you guys once I get to Leasty. Okay, welcome everyone to Leasty. Now, before I quickly head on to the station, I'm just going to grab a little bit of fuel here whilst I orbit around the sun. I found it right about what I think is the best spot to grab fuel, and that is where you see that green orbital line, like the green line around the sun there. I try to keep that line up with the bottom of my dash, or the bottom of my window, and that seems to work out rather well for me. I wait till I get to around about 140% heat level, fly away, and then I'll just fly back in again, and that seems to be working rather well for me. Now, obviously I don't have to, I can just go buy fuel. But when I can just do it as easy as this, it's... I don't know if there's really any point to buying any fuel anymore. If I could just, you know, fly around the sun for a few minutes and then just get all my fuel back again. Admittedly, it does take a little bit of time and maybe the few hundred credits are probably worth it. But, I don't know. I like doing this because it's fun and I've gotten a little bit of practice and I'm actually pretty decent at gaining fuel. So that might have to do it for now. I think that's enough fuel. I don't really want to go overboard. And you guys can see that once you hit 150... And that's why I was saying around about 140 is where you kind of pull away, because around about 150 is when you start taking some damage. So the station we're going to go to is George Lucas, so let me lock onto that and we'll head over there right now. It doesn't take too long to get the station, which is rather nice. There was a station that I was going to to do a rare trade, that is the uh, Uzumaku, Uzumaku station, or Uzumaku system, sorry. It had a station in there. Uh, Sven Ring, I believe, or Sven Drop Ring, which you actually have to spend about 20 minutes flying from the sun to the actual station itself. Admittedly, I did make a fair amount of decent profit there, and I've missed George Lucas completely. Um, by the way, that is obviously a reference to George Lucas. I mean, I don't know if that really counts as a reference, if it's a direct link to the actual person itself. Uh, there is a place, though, I found a station called Ridley Scott, I believe. Is it Ridley Scott? Ridley Scott that actually sells leathery eggs. Uh, so essentially we are selling aliens. <laughs> I thought that was a lovely, a lovely kind of like a little nod to the alien series. Uh, I thought that was kind of nice. There were so many Easter eggs and so many hidden references that uh, that are in this game that I actually really like. It's, it's nice that they're all there. But uh, anyway, we're coming on to George Lucas now to buy us uh, and to sell us our, our main product, the, the whiskey we've been grabbing, and to also buy the product that we came here for as well. So we'll be doing that, uh, hopefully, once we pull in right now. So we are coming in uh, rather slow speed, but we should we should be lined up rather nicely. I've realized also, when going to these locations, I find that going towards them head-on isn't usually the best thing to do. So what I do is normally I'll fly around it, and then once I actually do find it, I'll uh, fly in from the, like, the planet side. That way I'm lined up with the front door, like I'm trying to do right now anyway. So once I've lined up, I'll jump out. And I should be at least relatively close to the, being on the side with the front door here. And, uh, yeah, good enough, I guess. It, it's a lot better than spawning on the other side and having to fly around. Because where you fly into the place from actually affects, uh, basically where you actually come in from. And is this station firing at someone or did I just see a random blue laser? Probably just a random blue laser. But anyway, George Lucas is a, one of these, um, uh, Coriolis stations? You know what I'm saying? That correctly? I have no idea. It's, it's it's not bad looking. It's a blue light. So I believe blue lights is a lion's, red light is federation, and I think green is um the empire. I can't remember what colors the green uh the the empire uses, but I'm pretty sure yeah, red is federation, uh blue is alliance, and yeah. That's just flying right now, and uh, we'll quickly dock at pad number 43, which is right down here. Perfect. And slow down. I went a little bit too fast. Don't kill me, please. No, we're good. I'm still getting used to flying. I, I admit, this ship I haven't really spent too much time with. So, despite me putting so much money into it, by the way, I am still getting used to how it flies. It, it, it take, the, the, the worst thing about the ship is that it takes so long to slow down. That's the only complaint I really have about it. 
Uh, because I'm so used to flying my hauler, which actually slows down a lot faster. This thing just seems to drift along and just kind of slow down as if you're not even putting your foot on the brake. But uh, anyway, welcome to George Lucas. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to the commodities market and have a check on our price for the item we are currently selling. So, Erin and Pearl Whiskey, we bought it for, and it even tells us if I go over here, bought for... 100 uh, sorry 1620 credits and we're going to sell it to the market for 14,000 so that's a fair decent profit here and the galactic average is about 9k so since we're selling it for 4k it's definitely uh, a, a great deal so let's go sell and we'll sell all of that we have on us and as you can see it's selling for 70k and that profit is 61k which is a fair amount of money and i don't think i could do that any better not to say there isn't any better places to do trades, I'm just doing trades here because it's, a, at least to me personally, it's the best place I've found. So, the item I've came here for is Leeston's Evil Juice. Now, you're probably wondering, why are you getting an item that only buys for 457 credits? It probably doesn't sell for much, even with the, even with the profit gain. Now, the interesting thing, at least I've theorized, that the lower it is from the galactic average, like the more distance it has between... Because like the galactic average is obviously the average of a series of numbers uh calculated like the middle spot basically so if we're buying it for so cheap on the scale we're buying it for i'm just going to round out all the numbers up here so say the galactic average is uh 8k and say the value price of buying here is 0.5k that means that right now we're on the lowest end of the scale so since the galactic average is the average that means that on the complete opposite side of the scale is most likely the value we're going to get for the money. So the closer your buying value is to the galactic average, your profit isn't going to be that much more than the galactic average is. So basically, I guess what I'm saying is the cheaper you buy something is compared to the galactic average, the more it's going to sell for when you actually find a decent place to sell it for. So I'm going to just show this here by I'm going to buy 12 of these because I can. And I have the capacity for 5,400 credits. Again, not really outlaying too much money there, and, you know, it's only 5,000 credits, but you guys will see, once I get to Aridin, how much that'll actually sell for. So hopefully my whole analogy made sense with what I'm trying to talk about. Average is the middle spot, therefore, if you're so far down on the scale, when you, you know, sell it for profit, you'd be on the complete opposite end. Kind of like a seesaw effect, basically. So I'm going to skip forward to when I get to Aridin, and I will see you guys in a second. Okay, welcome back everyone to Asban City. So I'm going to just kind of really quickly recap what I would talk to you guys about in today's episode because I admit it probably is a pretty short episode uh, as I did a lot of traveling in the fast forwarding segment and the whole thing is really based around me traveling. I think the whole trip itself was around about 20 to 25 minutes uh, in total to get to uh, Leasty and to get back here. So I guess you guys will see the profit once I kind of dock, and you guys will see me sell it. Uh, so you guys can kind of judge whether or not you think 20 minutes of flight for that amount of money is worth it. Now, obviously, there are items that are more expensive, or rare items that are more expensive. I've just happened to pick these specific items because, well, it's a trade that I've done before, and it's a trade I feel confident in showing you guys in terms of its profit as opposed to how much you actually buy the item for itself. So, uh, here we are going into the main entrance right now. I'm going to slow down right now so I don't crash my ship as I have done before, sadly. I have booped my ship on the head as I was delivering rare cargo. That made me really, really upset. So, number four is all the way over here, which is great. Now, for whatever reason, this thing happens. Every now and then, your kind of pad numbers will disappear. Not the biggest deal, but it is a current bug that is in the game. Anyway, so rare items or rare trades uh, is a trade of an item that you find in specific stations and you gain a decent amount of profit for the further away you fly from its point of origin. So right now I've flown from Leasty to Asban City or to uh, Erinin and if I go to my starport services you guys will see just how much of a profit it actually is. Now I believe I've written down the number or wrote down the number correctly with how much of a profit this actually is. So here it is. You're selling it for 12,956 credits. Now, considering you bought that for 459 credits itself, that's that's basically saying you bought it for 0.5 and you sold it for 13. That's um, amazing. I believe, if I'm correct, uh, I can't rem maybe not remember this all by heart, but that is a profit of around about 
4,700. I, I think, is it 4,700? I think it might be. Anyway, let's sell this, because right now if I sell this for, let's sell all 14. Uh, sorry, all 12 that I have on me. Right now, so, I'm selling that for 155,000, and my profit is 149,000. Now, just keep in mind, I paid 5k credits to get all these, and I'm now getting 155k credits. So that, that is a lot. That is, I, I think, probably one of my favorite trades I've done in this game so far, and that is basically what rare trades are. Getting a, a small supply of a certain item, flying it out to a faraway place to make a decent profit on it, and making a decent profit on it. So let me know what you guys think about rare trades in the comments down below, and if you guys have been doing rare trades, uh, what is your favorite rare trade to do currently, and how much profit does it actually net you? Anyways, hopefully you guys have enjoyed today's video. I think I will maybe go out and buy myself a new ship after this video, as I will have a fair amount of money saved up. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Stay awesome, everyone.